Got Tito tonight. Hey, hey, Tito. You met you met the Knicks, right? When yes. We were here? Yeah. Yes. Is this their uh, dog? Yeah, dreadlocks, uh, piercings, split tongue. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I want to climb this with is, him sometime. Yeah, this is their dog. We're we're pet sitting while they're out of town. Oh my gosh, Very Tito nice. looks cute. What's Tito? Oh yeah, Chihuahua? Tito's adorable. One of the cutest Chihuahuas I've ever I feel seen. Like, was Tito over for dinner one night? I feel like I met Tito. <laughs> Yeah, probably. They usually bring him when they come over. Okay, so. I would imagine so. Yeah, yeah. Tito's a cool dog. We like oh. Tito. Yeah, big fans of Tito. Shout out to Tito, <clears throat> dude. I've uh, been ordering a bunch of podcast equipment because I want to have the capability of doing live podcasts from my house. I am <laughs> forever struck by the night walker that we were over. We were doing like a big dinner at my house, sushi night, right? And like, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. Dinner chilled out, and like, I don't know. So at like, some point, Walker goes, "You guys want to do a podcast?" Just like super chill, and everybody's like, "Oh yeah, ha, 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 yeah, that'd be fun, fun." And then like Walker like unzips a bag and slowly starts getting out like microphones <laughs> and the audio. Deck. It's a whole setup, man. Dude, it was so cool. And then like ten minutes later, he goes, "Hey, uh, we're ready to go live. If you are, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to see." If you want to listen, we don't have video of that, but if you would like to listen to the episode he's talking about, that would be episode 39, live in Salt Lake City. Yep. Uh, you can find that on Spotify, Apple, or the po any podcast app. Not on YouTube. But yeah. That one's for the OG listeners. That's right. Back before we went uh, on live on YouTube. And so speaking of uh, having my own podcast set up, I've also been talking with my uh, friends at the Hacker Group, and I think we're going to try to record some episodes here soon. Nice. Which would be pretty fun, I think. Heck yeah. Cool to finally get some nerd talk Just like going. hanging out, or are you guys going to try to like keep uh, it specific to topics? Or I'm sure like we won't stray far from nerdy stuff. We... Even our when, ADHD would never allow us to face Even on when I topic. try to steer the conversation away, we somehow find our way back. But I think it'll still be pretty freaking sweet. I'm excited. Sure. But uh yeah, I was ordering all the equipment today and like it's interesting. I don't know. It's cool learning about new things. I like delving into learning new stuff about new stuff. What a fun what a fun thing to do. Yeah, I was making a joke about ADHD, but that's 100% something that I do. I, I very badly have ADHD and yep. definitely get like, yep. you get into a hobby or something or like interested in it. And then you start looking at all the stuff and you're like, yeah. oh, that's pretty cool. Wow. <laughs> that's neat. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times you don't, I gotta like check myself. I'm like, all right. <laughs> like you just how far am i into, getting into this how about that last thing you got into like three yeah, weeks yeah. ago no, we're just gonna let that go now yeah. like, <laughs> story Take of my life either that being said we've been podcasting for what a year and a couple months now a year and a half yeah no a year and a couple Ooh, months right more than a year yeah more than a year but less than i a year and a half. made our email which i need to at the end of the episode if you stick around you might win a prize. You remember when I had that offer that one episode, Scout? I ended up having to cut that segment. The listen oh, really? to the sounds. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Guess what they were? Yeah, because yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just like, the sounds I don't know. Didn't come I need through. a better computer. My it's not the processing makes my screen sharing like not great. Not so, good. Okay. Yeah, like the sound was not definitely not worth listening to that game. So I just deleted okay. that whole part. <laughs> nice. Probably for Fair. the best. Probably for yeah. the best. Yeah, I'd love to talk with you. Actually, maybe I could do a segment. I bet you one of the guys that at the hackerspace would be very into doing a segment on building your own computer and just like the basics of what you need to look for. That could be a, a pretty fun, pretty like, I don't know, good segment to get some outreach on YouTube, maybe. Or to like yeah. uh, how to how to build a really good like, under five hundred dollar system or something. Mm, that would yeah. be a good one. Yeah, yeah, those kind of videos are definitely nice. Like whenever I, I definitely do a lot of research usually into different mm -hmm. stuff. Whenever you get into a hobby, and like videos like that of like, are definitely things that I would watch before buying. Like making an Absolutely. expensive purchase usually. 
Oh yeah. Always read yeah. reviews and watch videos. And oh, you were yeah. talking to me today about like you want a video for or a computer rather for video processing and GIS stuff, which is like kind of a niche thing. And I'm sure somebody could say like, here's, here's what's going to be good for like these niche things. You know, I always love when I can find a Reddit thread or a YouTube video about my specific little problem. And you're just like, fuck yeah. Somebody's been here. Somebody's explored this. I got to say, since you just brought up Reddit, man, I just kind of within the past year or two started using that a lot. Reddit's awesome, dude. Like, I really appreciate that, like, you're not always going to get the right information or the best information, but you're getting it from real people. Yes. Like, you know that, like, which is kind of cool. Like, and a lot of times you do get really good recommendations or advice about stuff. It's generally, like, the best review site I have found. Or, like, yeah, like, I'm looking for a review on, like, what's this thing like with this thing and this thing? Somebody out there has been, like, hmm, Somebody went on Reddit and talked yeah. about it. Yeah. I tried this. It sucks. Don't try it. You're like, okay, I didn't think of that. <laughs> yeah, dude, like, I, we, uh, our roommate's shower was not working. So I was, like, we could, you know, I was, like, ah, I'll try to fix it myself before we call a plumber and, like, uh first thread turn the knob it works oh shit turned it on yeah no but i definitely used like reddit i went r slash plumbing and like got got some advice yeah dude what was could i ask what was the problem so the shower would turn on like the cold water Mm -hmm. and then like the second it would start to get to where it would warm up or heat like be hot it would just totally lose all pressure and stop coming out of the the spigot thing. or whatever you call it okay. yeah yeah uh was it something faucet, in the handle maybe so i had to well first off the thing was so old it was like calcified into the wall like <laughs> yeah, the thing yeah. so you know i had to like walk with like, a, a chisel know. and hammer <laughs> <laughs> it took I, I like over the course Tink. of a week like every day i would spray this thing with like penetrating oil because it was so hard to get out nice yeah but then you just like yanked it out and there's this like cartridge that goes in like the very back yes, of it. Yes. And yes. that thing was yep. no good. So I had to get a new one of those and I replaced it and we're all good now. Look. Nice. Yeah. Feels really cool it's, to uh, fix something like that on your own. When you're like, oh, so fuck cool. yeah. We would have paid a plumber like probably a couple hundred to do that. <laughs> yep. And it costs you like 40 bucks or whatever for just Yeah. The piece is like 40 or 50 bucks. Yeah, dude. I love it. I replaced a well pump once. And if we ever need to do that again, like. Dude, you know, you know, now I know how, or if yeah, somebody else has a problem. Yeah. Yep. Dude, it's cool. I, I like kind of lived at and tended my parents' house for like a year or so. And it was cool learning all the little like odds and ends like, okay, here's how to rewire this. Okay. Here's how to put a pipe over that. Here's how to like install a U trap and like just random shit. Man. It's super cool. Dude, they should have, see like a class like that. And a Dude. class about finances are two things that it's fucking. It's absurd that they don't teach that in Basic middle school, repair. high school, like to 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 in public education. Mm-hmm. Two extremely yeah. valuable classes, just like you know, general handy. How do you do stuff? And then like, hey, this is how you manage money and like go through the world. <laughs> Dude, and I will say, people shit on home ec and shop but like i learned a lot of good shit in those classes yeah dude nobody i I agree everybody would always just take those as like the oh basically a free period class like i don't have to do anything yeah nobody basically gone yeah do you 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 work at a school chris do you guys have those classes nope no surely dang nope nope man woodshop was one of my favorite classes and one of my favorite teachers in high school i liked woodshop a lot i built a uh over the course of the semester, I built like a swinging bench. It's at my mom's house. Uh, oh yeah, I've sat on that. Yeah, bench. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I built that. <laughs> I will dude, say, dude, I banged your sister on that <laughs> bench. <laughs> Me too. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, wow. Wow. But uh, do you guys have any like at this point, Chris? What like extra classes besides like the core subjects do you guys offer? Are yes. Because you, you're at a middle school, is that right? I'm a, at a middle high. I'm actually high. part of a combined K through 12 campus. Whoa. Actually, my school district does a pretty good job um, for students in high school. They, rather than each individual school doing their own thing, they combined it all to a career center. So you can go there and learn uh, plumbing, electrical, HVAC, 
Like it's its uh, own campus thing? Correct. Oh, I see. And a lot of them you can oh, get you can get your certification, something that would cost you a lot of money at a technical school like welding, cosmetology and such. And so a student could graduate, you know, as a senior and already have the certification and go immediately to to work. So. That's good. That's a good. Yeah. That's nice. definitely good that we, there's that. Uh, yeah. We definitely need more people getting into trades and like, yeah. I feel like for a long time, college was always like seen as just way yeah, better than getting way, a trade, yeah. which yes. is like absolutely ridiculous. Like, Dude, trades make a lot, a lot of, of the tradesmen make way more money than most college grads. Uh huh. Oh yeah. Yeah, honestly, like welding and shit, you make buku bucks. I thought about getting into welding when I was kind of going through my. Before I went to Seuss, I almost went to welding school. That's why I ended up going to Seuss instead. <laughs> Dude, I did some welding at uh, Turtle Island, and that shit was fun. I enjoyed it a lot. I would like to learn to weld, and like, it's once we're on the compound, well, let's think. weld some. Yeah. Speaking, Speaking of, of Seuss, I just brought it up, but yeah. We should mention that Seuss of the Carolinas, the place where Scout and I met each other, mm -hmm. which is why we call this podcast Wilderness Radio because it's a wilderness. Yep. It was a wilderness therapy program. They just announced this past week that they're sh they're shutting down. Mm -hmm. So, yep, really big bummer. We Dude, had so... a lot of good years at Seuss. Yep, a lot of good years, good memories. I, mm -hmm. I remember, and I talk about this frequently with people. You and I talking about, hey, this is like the best time of our lives right oh yeah yep yep this is the good times <laughs> this yeah, is it. working we're there in... we were all very aware like yeah these are the good these are the good old days good at least years. at least some of them yep oh yeah but, they definitely uh, were dude also a spiro is shutting down too that's the other program that Real i learned Utah, out here yeah 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 i guess somebody was telling me there's some like new laws that got passed or something yeah about backpack weight I don't know something uh, like that to where like I don't hate that. kids can't realistically I, carry backpacks anymore. Which if you're a backpacking program, kind of yeah, that makes it hard. Does I mean, you in? I think you and I would both agree there could definitely <laughs> be more regulation and higher Reform. standards in, yeah. in the industry than yes. there has been. So yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. While it is sad that Seuss is closing and some Aspiro and I would maybe even probably some other programs, also good. <laughs> like in the long run, it might be good for the overall like wilderness therapy like field because mm. it'll force businesses to figure out what's like the best thing to be doing sometimes sad things can be good things <laughs> yeah but yeah all right all right peace yep cheers i feel i do feel sad that there will never be like you know pe people in their young 20s that will be able to go there and make like such Have friendships that, that we were able to yeah and like you know, I do think that that was like helpful for a lot of the kids. Not necessarily all of them, but um, I I've definitely been there for moments that changed kids' lives. Absolutely. And I've like touched yeah. base with them like several years on, and then been like, "Hey, just so you know, that did like save my life. That was a game changing moment." So I, I like definitely know I did positive things, but I also like I look back and I reflect, and I know I was not in the right, and I like did not good things at times too. You know what I mean? Which we've talked about. Yeah, we I should mean, we should have been trained more. When you're with when you're doing therapy with somebody 24 hours a day for a week, it's pretty hard <laughs> to like be the perfect person and do the you right can, thing, yep. say the right thing every single time. Like, yep, you know, <laughs> indeed it is. But but great experience. Overall. I'm glad we got to work there when uh when it was when it was still in its heyday. Same. Yeah. Yep. Sad it's gone. Yeah. The. Uh, the image I always put for the intro to the podcast on YouTube now is me and Scout sitting on opposite benches in uh, Yosemite. What was that? No, it wasn't Yosemite. It was uh, that the picture? one next That's... to Sequoia. What is that one? Kings Canyon? Kings Canyon. Yes, I was in Kings Canyon. Are you it's sure? It's definitely in Kings Canyon. Yosemite. I'm positive. Okay. Positive. Right. Uh, I'll trust you, but. But that's us sitting Definitely. on those benches, and that was our first road trip we took while we were working at Seuss, like one of the places we stopped. Oh, that was definitely a second. The first one we took with Jonathan and Steve. What's that Remember that one? one? Yeah, that one. Because we true. went out to yeah, California. Yeah, yeah, they weren't with us. Then. Yeah, you're right. That was Dude. the second one. But we were still working at Seuss. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> 
Dude, that was one of my favorite trips. That was my first trad lead. I did my first trad climbing lead on, at, on Yosemite on a route that it goes into the nose, which I then climbed when I attempted the nose. And, and I, I probably out. will fucking climb when I actually climb the nose. Because I can't climb. Yeah. Yeah, that was a uh, – man, a lot of great memories there. That's where I got the van was at Seuss. Yeah, which is also yep. – Almost to its <laughs> on, almost ready to close out. We've been talking about burning van. Where we? Uh... <laughs> I would love to find a way to like. So my here are my concerns. Don't you know, matter. while well, let's, burning let's a van in the, the desert is fun. Like, what's, it what's also... the pitch? What is burning van? We want to take all right, the van. Well, like out. all we all right, we can talk about the complication parts. But I my I, my thing would be to find a place in the desert. Or somewhere where there's like a, a ghost junkyard town or and just like fucking blow the van up or some shit. <laughs> Shoot it up and blow it up. Shoot it up, whatever, yeah. <laughs> uh, Do some cool action film scenes to and shit. it, whatever, yeah. Yeah. Have a concert. We could do a whole festival. I mean, yeah, I make it like grieve. a mini festival. Yeah, but Burning then like, van. Fi- it would be sweet if we could find somewhere where we could actually leave it, where it would be okay to leave it. I don't want to just like... To, you know, take the van out in BLM land somewhere and, like, leave it there, like... I mean, I think we would have to tow that's it That's not back. LNT. <laughs> We're gonna have to tow it back and, like, clean up shit, but well, I'd see, be down to do that. Hold on. Because it's, like, looking. it might be, like, a couple hundred bucks to tow it. I would pitch, like, 50. We could each pitch, like, 50, well, if you, you have, know? And if you have uh, AAA, you might get free towing miles, AAA actually. doesn't work on the van. Ask me how I fucking really? found out. Why yes. not? Because it like you move when you remove the passenger seats from it, it like indicates that you live in it. Which blah blah blah. Uh, I fucking found this they won't shit move out. The house. Remember when uh my fucking oh, axle or yeah. my uh, uh wheel hub broke down on the way down to Vegas for our road trip? Yes, I do. When I did not make the magic show, I fucking spent like four hours on the phone with AAA arguing with them like you gave me the fucking insurance you sold it to me <laughs> yeah it was uh not cool but then my insurance hooked me up because they're dope shout out state farm okay there's a see i'm looking into it i swear i was reading about there's like places in there's at least one place in Nevada where uh there's like a junkyard for like old cars and stuff in the desert. Really? Yeah, like we're like see like it wouldn't be a big deal to leave something there, I don't think. Well, but, fuck yeah. Okay, well let's do that. So something like that. I yeah, I'm absolutely. trying to like see if I can find it real quick, but uh no. Yeah, well, try to find an old bone yard in the desert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well anyways we'll do some more research but yeah that would be sick i definitely have some friends who would come out to burning van we could do like a little <laughs> fucking music festival and stuff that would be sick record a thousand podcast episodes dude that's where we could break the world record for the longest podcast <laughs> wilderness radio presents burning van i guess the podcast in the van dies that day <laughs> Oh my god, dude! That yeah, throwback. Insane. Nobody knows what I'm talking about. My except god, dude! Roger and you there. That was that's probably the greatest throwback I've ever heard in my fucking life, dude. <laughs> oh my god! On one of our road trips, so we joked about. I brought up a conversation about how it would be kind of interesting to do like a, you know, how in the Truman Show, uh, Jim Carrey movie, they like film the guy's life 24 hours a day, like whatever that you do a podcast, but it only takes place inside of the van all the time. So, like, sometimes nobody's in there, sometimes we're driving, like, you know, but it just constantly goes. And so I guess this podcast will end when, uh, or imaginary podcast will end when the van dies. Dude. (laughs) Oh my god, we have to do this. We're doing Burning Van. (laughs) We have to. We're gonna sell merch. (laughs) Yeah, there'll be merch, there'll be a festival. Dude, it would be so cool if we had listeners show up to Burning Van. All right, we'll start. Let's start planning it. I'm down. I'm sold. I'm in. We can project movies and shit on the projector. Oh, yeah. We can get Ben to come down and drop some sick beats. <laughs> have a cipher. 
<laughs> set by Jizzy Gillespie. Yeah. Dude. Well, uh, let's see. Did you, uh, we should definitely plan that. Did you say you had, uh, some stuff? Yes, Walker. You will be happy to know. Here, I'm gonna. I'm not the I, only I, I... one. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Scout brought a topic, guys. Not just a topic. Check this out. This Ooh. is my podcast list. I'm not going to show it too quick. It just looks Look like that. a... Oh, now we can see it. Saw yeah. it for a second. Yep. I don't want you to see what they actually are, but I want you to see I do have okay, items. I'll I've pause. I, have, I, have, I can just freeze that frame later no, and find don't. out. No, <laughs> don't. <laughs> no, I won't. I won't. All right. Well, what, um, do you, what do you want to talk about tonight? So, the first thing I have on my list is... Uh, oh, interesting. Beatriz... Oh, burps, shit. Uh, uh, the history sorry. of burps. Beer burps. <laughs> Beatrice Flamini, who spends 500 days living alone in a cave. She already did this or like? Yeah, she already did this. She came out, I think recently. I want like to Gollum. say. <laughs> yeah, dude. So, yeah. She's a Spanish mountaineer. Well, I'll just read the article. After spending 500 days alone in a dark cave 70 meters below the Earth's surface, assailed by a plague of flies and the odd tantalizing vision of roast chicken, most people would be craving a wash in some company. But after emerging from her subterranean lair in southern Spain a little after 9 a.m. on Friday. Uh, so this was like really recent, actually. Oh, like, yeah. That says April 14th of yeah, this like year. Yeah, like a wow. couple, yeah. a week or so ago. And having a quick checkup with a doctor and a psychologist, she was treated instead. Uh, Beatrice Flamini was treated instead to a 50-minute press conference in which she endeavored to explain the almost inexplicable. Yeah, I hope they explained why she did it <laughs> i was expecting to come out and have a shower she told the room full of reporters i wasn't expecting there to be so much interest that was a rare miscalculation on saturday uh 20th november 2021 three months before russia invaded ukraine the elite sportswoman an extreme mountaineer entered her stygian lodgings in a cave outside granada 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 yeah granada like canada penis it's not granada <laughs> Uh, Grenadine, you said, Chris? Grenada. Grenada. <laughs> Determined to learn more about how the human mind and body can deal with extreme solitude and deprivation. Oh, so I thought it would be like a caving experiment. It's an isolation experiment. Monitored by a team of scientists from the universities of Almeria, Grenada, and Murcia, who kept in touch through special limited messaging technology, the 50-year-old athlete from Madrid is now thought to have broken the world record for the longest time a person has spent alone in a cave. That's weird that it, she's That's thought wrong. to have. What's that guy? Who's the guy? He's still in the Nutty Putty Cave. Uh, that's true. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Uh, Flamini told the media that she lost track of time after day 65. Holy shit. Dude, it's like a shift that never ends. Asked how she had succeeded in keeping herself sane for so long, she pointed to her expensive experience in mental preparation, adding, I got on very well with myself. Yes, she talked to herself, but never out loud. After all, the silence of the cave, it wasn't my house, had to be respected. The key, she added, was consistency. For me, at least, as an elite sportswoman, the most important thing is being very clear and consistent about what you think and what you feel and what you say, she said. It's true that there were some difficult moments, but there were also some very beautiful moments. And I had both as I lived up to my commitment to living in a cave for 500 days. What an Jesus interesting Christ, dude. commitment. That's so fucking long. That's almost two years, dude. Yeah. Did they say how big this cave was? Did I miss uh, that? No. I, so I have this other article, too. Let me see if they have any more. Because, like... It'd be cool if we had a picture of the cave. Huh? And I would assume there's running water in there. There's no way she could have done that otherwise, right? I, I would imagine I so. Or at least, like, they're – because she had a support team. So her support team sent her fresh food and clothes and removed her waste every five poos. The rule of no communication, interesting, extended to the world, events, and personal tragedy. Oh, so she didn't know about Russian invasion or a family death. Interesting. That's probably part of, like, the rules, I guess, for the – Yeah, I would guess so. Actually, uh, yeah, like I actually listened to a podcast recently where they talked about a woman who was doing like an ultra long bike time trial mm -hmm. and they ended up uh, failing it, not accepting her break record time because she had had like her fiance came out like almost every day to see her 
so they said like she got mental support or emotional oh, support really? from that, and it's Dang. supposed to be done totally unassisted yeah damn i would assume that's similar to what they're why she had to do it with like yeah. a lack of support here i mean i kind of get it it makes mm-hmm. sense to oh i extent. if you're if the goal is to do it unsupported emotional support is a huge is part a big of it thing yeah, i mean most true. people that quit like a long through hike it, they quit because they get lonely and like right you know it's the emotions that make them quit it's not their body usually yeah oh yeah because i mean it's just you're just doing that shit oh uh, what else happened with this chick uh i mean that was that's pretty much it the people so, so how long she went in for 500 days or 500 she was going? days yeah wow she ever so slightly irked when she recounted how she felt when the moment came to leave the cape i was sleeping or at least dozing when they came down to get me i thought something had happened i said already no way yeah, she... I, hadn't, I hadn't finished my book <laughs> dude yeah that's interesting like she would have no concept of like a day how long day a day night. is yeah. inside of a cave because there's no <laughs> cycle so, like, of the sun getting to her there yeah, I guess you just get on your That's own wild. schedule of sleeping whenever you're tired. That must huh. be an insane transition back yeah. to real life I, after that. I kind of it has to fuck up your biology a little bit because the sun provides you vitamin D, right? Circa- circadian rhythm is that what it is? Yes. yes. Yeah. But also, yeah, just like I mean, vitamins and science. We're yeah, plants. Did it say we anything about? Right? Did it say anything about how she did like? Because I, I would assume you're right. You need some sunlight, right? Or well, it like said her team gave her like food and stuff. So I assume yeah. that they... Supplements, vitamins, and vitamins. whatnot. Dude, I wonder if she got like any nice things in her food. Like, did she get treats? Did she get to request what her food was? <laughs> no, nah, was I, uh, like... I bet they just would go into the cave and go, here's your fucking PB&J and like throw it in her face and then leave. <laughs> no, that's contact, <laughs> dude. That's contact. They would just throw it down the <laughs> hole. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, imagine fucking living in a cave for 500 days. That sounds horrible. It sounds... I mean, that's like... Solitary confinement is often thought of as like a terrible punishment. And that's like solitary confinement with also no sunlight. Actually, though, I would say it's cooler than solitary confinement. I'd rather be in a cave than solitary confinement. Because I can explore and shit and like see cool shit, you know. Get to it's know It's bigger the than the cells that they usually do right. for that type of thing, yeah. Yeah. Whereas, yeah, in solitary confinement, it's just like fucking bricks. Even if it was the same size, though, I'd prefer a cave to bricks. Oh, I would that's prefer. An, that's kind of an interesting being in a question. natural area. Would you, you rather know? be? Would you rather be stuck in like a, you know, ten by ten room for five hundred days, but you have a window and like sunlight, or in a cave, a giant cave, and like you have a light that and batteries enough to last you, whatever. Like, is there a Dang. one that you would prefer over the other? I, would I think I'd probably, the, the sunlight would be, ah, man, I don't think I, I think the sunlight would be, t- Yeah, I'd it really miss me. that after a while. It would tempt me I would too really bad. miss that. It would tempt me. I would like, I would want the freedom of exploring, but being locked up in a box and seeing like freedom is just out there. I just can't have it. That would be too much for me. I, I would, that would bother me more than like, okay, I can explore my little cave and like make a home down here and like this is my little area to figure out you know yeah but you'd also you wouldn't it wouldn't take you 500 days probably to explore the whole thing (laughs) oh no way i'm just like even if i have a small area it's just like my area to explore versus like a box that somebody put me in for me there's a big psychological component to like somebody has put me in here and trapped me in here you know hmm yeah, I, I would agree with that. If I fell down into a hole and were stuck in there for 500 days, that would be less bad to me than being in a similar like situation trapped in a tower or something where I can only look out a window, if that makes sense. Hmm. I, wouldn't, I don't think I would agree with that choice, but I hear where you're coming from. You get what I'm saying, though. Yeah, I do, I do. Well, the outrageous cool. slings so and arrows of fortune recently, I can bear. Huh? Yeah, she came out like a a week Couple ago, weeks ago, I guess. Four days ago is right Four when days that ago. article was written. <laughs> yeah. 
which is fucking cool. Which I guess now she's consulting with the Guinness Book of World Records, which would be wild if they fucking failed her on a technicality. Because the last record was like 70 days or some shit. She like oh my God, crushes dude, it by yeah. like 10 times or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, sorry. Sorry, it doesn't count. They gave you batteries. You had to backpack all your batteries in yourself. Yeah, I would be, I would actually yeah. be really interested if she did some like interview after a while of being back in real, the real world of like her talking about that, like what that transition is like. Oh yeah, definitely a book deal. It's interesting. Dude. For sure a book deal. What did the, what did the, what did it feel like to come out of that cave and see sunlight for the first time? That must've been like horrible. Honestly, I feel like at that point, like probably incredibly blinding <laughs> there's a joke about your mom here there's a joke about emerging from your mom into the sunlight like here. what if every time she goes outside now unless it's night she just like it's so bright <laughs> that's her what eyes. i'm saying with the skin st- it must fuck up your skin how pale would you get yeah dude? her skin too yeah vitamin d yeah, I would be curious about physiological changes that it would cause. Because there was a like a couple years when I lived in the basement at my parents, and it fucking permanently changed my body to be more cold hardy. Because it was always like 40 to 50 degrees in the basement. Maybe not 40, but 50 to 60 degrees in the basement. It was fucking cold all the time. And I like, I swear my body just got used to being cold, you know? <laughs> and now I like, I can't be in heat, but I can be in cold. I don't know. It was weird. It just like seemed like I acclimatized to being colder, which imagine what your body would acclimatize to in like that kind of environment. I don't know. Wild to think of. Yeah, no, I, I want your, I think I'm going to have, if I lived somewhere where it was colder after living here for a while, it would definitely be a big adjustment. (laughs) (laughs) This doesn't really get that cold here. Let's see. What time? I got, uh... You got anything else you want to talk about revolving around that cave thing? No, that's all I've done on that. Or whatever. But just let me know, because I got a whole list here, buddy. (laughs) Yeah, thanks for the top. Thanks for bringing it up, dude. (laughs) Hold on, actually. Hold on. Walk. Yeah, give me... Give me... enough of that uh yeah i think this is the year that the podcast goes viral dude we're doing it we're going big we'll see 40 subscribers here we come (laughs) get out the plaque we're gonna by the end of the year we're gonna be like it's gonna be like dude you can't talk about that this advertiser said this and that and whatever you know (laughs) brought to you by hello tushy (laughs) Squarespace. We're all wearing sponsored yes. shirts and hats. Yeah, dude, I would love to wear sponsored shirts. I want to do ads just for the fun of it, dude. I think it would be great to do ads for anyone. What companies would you want to do ads for? Like companies that you genuinely respect, or like you use their products and like, you know, you're like, I endorse this product without them even like asking me to. Marlboro cigarettes. Marlboro cigarettes. <laughs> Smoke wow. them, kids. They're cool. Yep. Marlboro cigarettes and Budweiser. I hear they're both yeah. very uh, pride. It's friendly. super cool to die earlier than the rest of your friends. <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, what companies would I advertise Ma- for? One for free? I thought that you said you would do right the gas station. Oh, Maverick. Yeah, I would do a Maverick commercial. And we already have the idea there. Yeah. Yeah. I've started writing it up a little bit. It's, dude. I think we might have to just go out and film it and like try it sometime. I think that's a good, good thing to do. Eventually, is just do it. Yep. Oh, speaking of which, May six. See if you can uh, get up to Moab. Uh, you may be my... resting. Yeah. Also, my friend from who actually works at Seuss now, Riker. Uh. For a, at least a couple more weeks. Um, he's actually <laughs> headed out west to do the PCT. Oh, sick. And I think he might be coming into Vegas like the 6th or the 7th to... And then I'm going to drive him out to the like start of the trail oh, at sick. the bottom. Yeah. Okay. 
Because cool. it's only six hours from here. So I was like, dude, yeah. Nice. I was like, instead of like making all those arrangements to get yourself down there, just right. flying to Vegas, I'll drive you down there. Like, He was like, sweet, arrangement is made. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome, dude. Nice. Where's the trail start? Do you know? At the border. I don't know. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it could... honestly, could we pop into the PCT for a little bit? That's a cool ass thing to talk about. It's the Very well, yeah. So related. people who don't know what we're talking about, the, the PCT Pacific is the acronym for the PC, yeah, the Pacific Crest Trail, which goes from uh, the border at the of Mexico in the U.S. at the southern part of California, all the way up to the Canadian border in Washington. And it continues on past those points, obviously, as well. Uh, not really. I, I guess mean, it, that's, it that's becomes the trail. a different trail. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, well, I'm I sure mean, it conti- trails at the that trail point, continues like... in Canada. It doesn't just like end at the border; it continues on into like right. But if, the if next you're town. doing the Pacific Crest Trail, that would be the end. Like once you get to the border, that's the end. Yeah, but what does the trail become then? The all right, hold on. I mean, dude, you could walk anywhere, dude. Anywhere's a trail, right? <laughs> We're getting into some crazy no. hypotheticals <laughs> here, like. <laughs> Dude, if you think about it, we're on the PCT right now because you could walk from here and be on no, it. That's so that... not what I'm saying. I'm saying like the trail continues. <laughs> no, on. It's I know part of a saying. longer trail system. Don't get smarmy with me, buddy. Oh, I'll get smarmy. Oh, it's don't more, you it's smarm. highly entertaining. Don't you smarm, buddy? Smarmy is a fun word. But uh, anyways, yeah, the Pacific Crest Trail. I this is the definition of smarmy. <laughs> <laughs> See if you know. I looked it up. Of, uh, uh, ooh, smarmy would be to become fresh with somebody, or uh, to yeah, become fresh with somebody would be my guess. So the dictionary definition on Google is ingratiating and wheedling in a way that is perceived as insincere or or excessive. Interesting. So smarmy is actually being sincere. But no, no, no. In scene is. Yeah, I think it's like kind of like sarcasm. Like... like it sounds. It seems kind of like sarcasm. Like. Oh, please explain it to me, Walker. Yeah. Well, let me go. Let me go ahead and do that. <laughs> this rule one of improv comedy. Yes, yes. And... <laughs> and. Oh, is that how you do it? Oh. That is. That's all you have to do. Okay. Yeah. Honestly, it's pretty wild how yes ending really is just all you have to do. If somebody just makes a joke, as long as you can make a joke that's as goofy, you're fucking killing it. No, but. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, did you take a look at that uh, Adobe podcast thing that I sent you? Yeah, that was cool. Dude, it definitely improves the audio. I'll give it a shot. Is it it also? I didn't. I didn't actually like. I just watched videos of people using. I didn't actually look at the downloading it or anything or whatever. So what I saw was you had to like sign up for like to test it because that's what it is. Because it's in beta, right? Yeah, it's in beta. Well, yeah. that's what you're testing. It's like an AI thing. So obviously they're mining all of our shit that we record on it to train the AI to take us over. Um, I, I you know what? Fine, I'll be one of the first dude, humans. So uh, you know, they're honestly the robots will look favorably upon me, and they're like, yeah. "Oh, this guy's an OG, dude. He's been uh, giving us his shit for a while." <laughs> and I'm gonna be real. We're doing a pretty shit job of it. Let's see what the AI can do. Like, really. If if it's uh, yeah, like... I mean the audio quality could be improved for sure. Yes, I meant the audio, world, but... video, yeah. comedic, uh, you know, face Writing, value of our face, style, structure, style, yeah. you know, entertainment Chris. value. <laughs> we could improve in all of those areas. I think we could agree, and the AI will help us do that. But yeah, it was sick. I was uh, watching it at play, and you can like edit out the ums and ands and all the verbal stutters that people have. It was pretty wild. You could even cut like huh. particular words out, and it would smooth them. I don't know if I. Yeah. I don't know Which if I would, would really do that. Fun. I don't know if I would cake out all that stuff, especially if I want to, you know, 
Oh, dude, please. I was over at my friend Dick's house and we were having a barbecue. <laughs> Turns into, I was dicks, 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 dicks. <laughs> dude, oh my God, that just reminds me. There was a chick interviewing a guy at like a video game. Uh, dude, women like, like to be competition. Let me tell you. And she has Tourette's and it was really funny what happened. Uh, let me see if I can find it because it's pretty funny. This would be one of the okay, segments that we would cut out in the yes. AI generated podcast. Yeah. That we're Sometimes I just like straight up cut out long pauses too. If I notice. Oh them. yeah. Actually shout out to you Walker. Cause you do a ton of editing. You do a lot of yes. uh, a yes. huge Someone amount of behind the work scenes. All. Yeah. Some would say all, <laughs> but, but they'd be wrong because this time I've got my list. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I did a Tell percent. Everyone what you smell like? Yes, of course. Go for okay. it. Dick, dick. He doesn't smell dick. It's dick. It's dick. It's it's not dick. It's. <laughs> you smell like a perfume. Do you know the name of the perfume you're wearing? Giorgio Armani or something. I don't know. Very classy. Very classy. And did you listen to any songs while you were getting ready today? I listened to OMG by New Jeans so I can get more credit with the K-pop uh, stands on Twitter. What a bitch! I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> fuck him. I'm so basically. Dude, I've forgotten all of my questions now. Oh dear God. That has to be a bit, dude. That's oh no! This is a bit. chick. No, it's not. That girl is a girl that actually has Tourette's. That, she's yeah. been doing like a YouTube channel for a long time. Like she is, she is very real. They just like invited her to do interviews at that thing. Like that's kind of like something she does sometimes. I struggle to believe it. No, I, I, it's, I promise it's real. Well, you don't think Tourette's is real? Is that what you're saying, Scout? Wow. I'm not saying that Tourette's is not real. I'm saying that that has to be a bit, dude. It it's not. I swear to you, it's not. You've not watched your her leg, videos. Man. You can vouch for her, because, dude, if she gets outed sometime in the future for faking, I mean, it, dude, coming, the reason I will, I will she, seriously question your judgment. And she I will was not interviewing trust you. people at the Streamy <laughs> Awards, which is a pretty big, like, you know, internet thing. The reason right. they invited her is because they know who she is. She de swear, she definitely has Tourette's. Swear, That's like her thing. Swear it on Fudgy's life. <laughs> of course. all right it's it is sworn oh dude i would never swear something on my dog's life you're crazy i would swear yeah, well, something on my best friend's life before that i don't believe in magic so i don't really care that's not magic that's religion dude <laughs> swearing on something is religion is, is it? it i don't know chris is it religion i don't know you're magic? the one who made the claim i don't is swearing on something religious or magic? It seems like it would have a religious background, maybe, but like also. Oh I can't shit! Think of it, it might be law. <laughs> oh really? Yeah, because you like swear yeah. on a. Oh, that's true. Well, well, let's. Yeah, see. but like, where did like? Oh, Dude, so it just leaked I don't even out know what pop Google. culture from. What do you even fucking research? Is swearing on something religious? Is swear is I... like the origin of swearing on my mama or whatever, you know? I don't origin know. of swearing or whatever, on something like that. Something because I actually, you say the law, like it, it's definitely possible it just leaked out into pop culture from there. I mean, there's definitely other, wouldn't yeah, be the what, first time something like that's happened. History of swearing on things. Well, this is just about swearing. Oh, well. I'm sorry. Yeah, my Google maybe, skills are not good enough. Is it worth adding to the list of things to look into, yeah. maybe? Yes. Yes, it is. I'll put it right on the there list right we'll now. Just add it on the list. Let's see. Get on the list. If that there's one is... thing we know how to do on this podcast, it's bring up stuff and then forget about it. And then, <laughs> yep. Well, it's better than not bringing up stuff. That's true. All right. Uh, I got a couple of things I wanted to, I thought would be interesting to talk about tonight. If you guys Sweet. want to move into that. Yes. All right. Are you guys, would you, I'll give you the choice between the two. I looked up uh, the 10 best conventions and expos that they have in Las Vegas. 
Oh, or I have we can uh, talk about professional gurning. I want to do the first, but I'm so curious what gurning is. I mean, we can do. We could probably do both, but what's gurning? We can do the conventions first. All right, it won't take long. Do you? Uh, is, let's see. Interesting Defcon conventions. Defcon has to be on there. If Defcon's is. not on there, I'm leaving. Defcon is on here. Fuck yeah. There is a Cauliflower Alley Club reunion every year, which is basically like professional WWE wrestling people getting together. That's sick. There's uh this one sounds cool. I would actually love to go to this one sometime. The International Pizza Expo. Oh my god, I would love it's, to. It's uh yeah, so like people with all kinds of different brands and ideas Man, and like, you know, microwave pizza delivery you know all, whatever the newest ideas in pizza well let's okay hold on i know and they have I some that we're doing a bit and we're just like kind of keeping rolling but i'm gonna look into this pizza thing yeah I'm no like, go ahead i'll, I'll just keep talking here? about it so okay. they have some events at the pizza competition too that sound cool they have the international pizza challenge uh, a competition where pizza makers vie for prizes in five categories uh with a pool of over fifty thousand uh, dollars, the World Pizza Games, a contest where five contestants do or there's uh, people compete in five different contests: uh, freestyle acrobatic dough tossing, the fastest Sick. dough, largest dough stretch, fastest pizza box folding, and the pizza triathlon. The winner of that gets a thousand dollars. Dude. There's pizza Dang. demonstrations. We just missed it. Yeah. Oh, uh, we, we just did? missed it. March 19th and 21st, oh. 2024 is when it is. The next one. Okay. But I wonder how much are tickets? I can't find how much tickets are. Hmm. Well, yeah, I would definitely go to PizzaCon. Next I one is uh, RollerCon. It's like one of the world's largest roller derby conventions. Cool. Fucking Which roller right. derby is an interesting sport. Have we? Uh, we should go do an uh, a roller derby episode or something sometime. Do an episode live from a roller derby. Ring. Yeah, I <clears throat> would enjoy covering weird sports, and that's a weird sport. <laughs> Have uh, we ever talked about roller derby? That's a cool sport to cover. Sorry, I'm interrupting. Is. Let's we'll talk about it another time. Let's stay on topic. Uh, Defcon is next. You've yeah. been to Defcon, Scout. What do you have to say about Defcon? Defcon is a hacking conference held in Vegas every year in August, where all kinds of different computer science and uh, I would say all kinds of different uh, hacking, which is basically breaking or misusing technology. So there's like IT professionals, picking. yeah, yeah, but also like general security. So there's like breaking into buildings. There's social engineering where all you get is to phone call people, and you're like breaking into their systems, doing that, like getting administrators' passwords and shit from them. Uh, and yeah, it's like a week long. They just put tickets on sale for pre-registration, which I'm stoked for. And it's a, a great way to connect with yeah, the hacking, cybersecurity, and IT community. It's been around since 1993 and has about 25,000 yearly attendees. We should uh, absolutely go and do an episode one year, man. Yeah, that would be cool. Uh, I think it would be very fun to do oh, an episode. For Chris, Def Con. this next one you're going to be into, I think. Okay. Star Trek Las Vegas. Oh, <laughs> shit, dude. <laughs> A five-day spectacular, that, <laughs> yeah. Down, you have my attention. Yeah, dude, Star Trek what Las Vegas, it? man. <laughs> what? You have my attention. Tell us more. Yeah, F fifty-seven-year well, mission. Is that it? It's a five-day festival. Um. And they're just talking a lot about like this the history of Star Trek. Uh they have stars and from all the series and the movies come. Uh everyone dresses in costumes. William Shatner <laughs> will sign an autograph for a hundred bucks. <laughs> it oh, warns shit. you. Dude, that's awesome. I would love to sign autographs for a hundred bucks. Yeah, there's not yeah, and then there's just kinda like 
karaoke parties, auctions, you know, interviews, all kinds of stuff. The cool shit you do at a convention. Nice. That sounds awesome. See, Chris, you should, uh, if you do some research, Chris, I would be down to go with you to that. What is it, though? That's the problem. I, I, I literally said every if you year. Do the research. Once a year. Yeah. yeah. Uh, finally, last one I'll talk about is a pretty big one. I would actually love to go to this one sometime, too. The CES, Consumer Ele- Electronics Show. That's where all the companies bring out the, like, new <laughs> stuff that they is not on the market, like new technology, whatever. Walk around and check out all kinds of stuff. That would be very cool to go to. Is that like home electronics or like computers or what? Everything. A few innovations over the years that have debuted. I mean, it like all industries that have tech in them. Like there, I saw there, I saw some, like I saw a car company that had this year that had like a, color changing exterior um you know all the like tv and computer companies have different stuff they come out with gaming companies have things drones like so it's truly everything it's just like yeah Dude, anybody who wants to debut like some cool new electronic thing that's the place to do it like ces dude that'd be sick i'm down to go heck yeah it says it's in january usually Dude, that'd be a, a cool thing to do on my birthday weekend, or around my birthday. It looks like it's around then. Several times it's fallen on my birthday. Yeah, not possibly, but... Dude. Yeah, there's a lot of... Vegas is definitely known as a town for gambling, but also conventions. They got a lot of conventions yep. here, so... Yeah, probably the True. two go together, if I were to guess. <clears throat> yep. Dude, I have to say, though, I like live music. It's fun. As I've grown older, I've become a convention guy. I love it. I love like nerding out, watching talks, <laughs> talking with people who enjoy the same shit that I do. It's such a great. Those do not to me. feel this, like the same thing to me. But, what do you mean? Like live music in a convention? Those feel like two completely different things yes. to me. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I yeah, yeah, switched yeah. over like my preferred. Uh, live I would still entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I like to do both, but. I have started to prefer more going to conventions. Whereas a kid, I was always like, let me go to concerts. Let me go see live performance versus like, I don't know, mingling or actively participating in. I don't know. Hard to describe it. But what else you got for us? You guys want to hear about professional gurning? gurning yeah what the hell yeah is any do not look it up do either of you have any clue what that might be or like what's a guess if you had to guess uh, uh, something to do with a gurney okay what do you guess. any any other guesses you would have chris gurney no yeah gurney, i mean, that's a very logical like, guess you're wrong or something that's a very like, logical guess gur- like g earning like it's like a mix of words or like not burning but gurning green burning i don't know <laughs> so here here's a this is a pretty good little video where they go through it wow i already don't like this <laughs> what kind of sport is this is it like ladies and gentlemen you can do this gina it's pulling a face you did this all the time on stage well, I've come to learn about gurning. Gurning is uh, pulling an ugly face whilst being framed uh, with a horse collar or ruffin. So how far do contestants go to win? How seriously do they take it? We did have one contestant who was so into the gurning that he actually had his teeth removed and pull a better gurn. Oh my gosh! If I'm going to have any chance of competing with these professionals, I'm going to have to learn from the best in the business. For this year's male champion, you are the reigning world ladies gurning champion. Yeah. Give me a a nice, easy, stage one gurning face. Wow! Your face has gone inside itself! (laughs) Wait, wait, let me try that one. Come on, girl. Inflate your cheeks while you're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a winner? 
How did you create that face? What's the tip? Cross your eyes and puff the best. <laughs> First up, we have reigning Gurning champion, Adrian. <laughs> Next, we have veteran Gurning champion, Gordon Blackrock. Reigning women's burning champion, Claire Spedding. We have a new gurner. Find my face. Cross your eyes and pull for the best. You, you'd probably be in the top three with something like that. Of course. Gina Yashere. Ah, the second. I would say that that is a world championship performance. Having seen what the world championships and reigning world champions bring to the table. Yeah, I, I would, she had the guy performance. The guys was very impressive with the teeth and everything. That was impressive. But uh yeah, I wasn't super impressed by the woman champions like face. I thought that was like eh. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say I feel like I could gern, compete. You have to, oh. yeah. So the rules are they oh, put dude, the like the horse, yeah, they put I don't the have thing the around color. you, and I guess you're not allowed to touch your face, and then you just yeah. turn around and give your ugliest face. I would like to. Run Whoa, the that's a good one. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Oh All right. my god! Oh, it's what, so what, ugly. Right. How would you? You can't touch your. <laughs> you got to turn around. You got to turn around, and then. Here, let me take my glasses off. <laughs> that's the best i got dude <laughs> a really cool contest for us to do on a fucking audio podcast or Thank on God youtube, YouTube now if Thank you're God only listening on if you're only listening what are you doing at this point come on if you're only listening Actually, on head to youtube like and subscribe smash video, that like button the video episodes are on uh Spotify too. Oh yeah, we can do. Like video you can actually now. watch the video on there now. That's cool, mm -hmm. dude. It's somehow worse quality than it is live. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's the weird sport of the week is a uh, professional gurning. Yeah, trying to make gurning. the ugliest face possible. I'd be curious what the history is. How old is gurning? Well, let me tell. I could tell you about it. Please do. Uh, I'm waiting. They I'm asking and originated. Waiting. Gurning competitions oh, are thought to have originated in 1297 at the Agremont Crab Fair in the UK, named oh, after the crab apple, which are pretty sour. It makes sense, then, that as part of the crab fair in this part of the world, they hold a face-pulling competition to see who can make the oldest, the ugliest face. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. I would not have thought the competition so is held in mid September each year. There's a men, ladies, and junior competition. The best gurner of all time is Peter Jackman, who won four times from uh, 1998 on with his uh, <laughs> famous face called the Bella Lugosi. I gotta see that. We gotta see this. Bella Lugosi gurning face. That's sick. Bella Lugosi was an actor that played Dracula? Dracula. Is that right? Yes, yes. From like what, the 30s? Yes, into the 40s. Interesting. Does Bella Lugosi have any facial features that would be of note, Chris, that you could. For gurning? Huh. Yeah, like what would you mm. think a gurning face called the Bella Lugosi looks like? Jeez. Oh, you have no idea? No. All right. Uh, elsewhere in the world, there is a similar Mr. Ugly competition in in Zimbabwe, which is uh, actually you just go up there and do your natural face, and they vote on the ugliest person. 
Dude, that's kind of <laughs> cool. I would be pretty into going to compete in that. <laughs> that would be fun to compete in. Dude, I came oh, in yeah, 97th the in the, in the, the Ugliest Man competition. Swipe right, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, yeah, dude, that should admit, be, you though, should do a gurn the, for your, uh, say I'm a, I'm a working on becoming a professional work- gurner and just like make your first picture, every picture a different gurn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that'll kill. Dude, the one woman that swipes right though, who gets the bit is going to be my fucking soulmate. She's the one, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's see. I don't have anything else. Gurning was my last thing. Nice. What an interesting sport. Yeah. Oh, well, man. Such a good one, dude. You're... How do you make that yeah, face? Yeah, yeah, Looks yeah. so Fucking ugly. Funny. <laughs> funny guy. Funny guy. Let, let us know in the comments. Am I a funny guy or am I an asshole? <laughs> <laughs> is walker funny or am i a great gurner <laughs> or neither or neither that's yeah. possible too well shall we wrap it up then gentlemen there's one thing Chris on when we talked about this i did want to ask him uh have you ever heard have you heard of morgan island before chris in south mm. carolina i have not it's a uh it's an island off on the coast south of Charleston that uh, has like 4,000 rhesus monkeys on it uh, that you're like not, not allowed to go to. It's illegal to go there. Can we give a shout out to who somebody commented that they feed the monkeys right on our YouTube. Yeah. There was a guy who said he lives here. Let me, let me look it up. Yeah. We, I want to give a shout out Uh, at, at least Right now, in the if early years, listening. before we get super duper famous, I want to give shout outs where we can get them. Because cause once we get Island, famous, you guys, uh, I'm forgetting all plays. of you. That's not bad. How many? 27? Oh, our, also, we had our first video hit over a thousand views. Oh, sick. It was any idea which one? Uh, the. Wh- oh, you. Larry David? No, it's the Area 51 uh, that Pioneer one. Yeah. one. Yep. Nice. Hell yeah, dude. Uh, there's a guy. All right. The guy commented, Pierce. Shout out, Pierce. Uh, he lives Go near Pierce. Edisto. And he goes by Edisto. the he goes by Morgan Island all the time on his boat. He can see them out there, and he feeds them in the morning and evening. And th- he throws fruit out there, and they come in the morning and evening. That's, That's so pretty cool. cool. Didn't we live near something Edisto, Chris? Edisto, Edisto County or something? Edisto River, yeah. Edisto River, okay. Yeah. I was going to say, I know that name from when I lived there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, shout out but to yeah, you. Morgan Island is near you, Chris, but don't go there because you'll get herpes if they pee on you or scratch you. Yeah, the monkeys you or... will fuck you up. Fuck you, know? you. I'm telling you, dude, that's a great <laughs> horror movie. That is such a cool horror movie idea. Yeah, we got uh, 1,025 views on Lost Pioneers of Area 51. Let's see. how Dude, that's awesome. Go. We should have done a separate video 31 on 31 subscribers. Island. Shout out if you're a subscriber. Actually, perfect time to do this. I was going to bring it up earlier. Uh, I'm going to put up an email on the screen right now. If you're interested, and thank you for lis- as a thank you for listening, I have these uh, bumper stickers. Mm-hmm. Says I love Smokey the Bear. Um, I have a lot of them, so if you would like one, send me an email to this email address, and uh, you know I'll get your address somehow, and I'll send it to you, and maybe a postcard too. Uh, but I'd send out some postcards. Yeah, I'll send some postcards out. If you're interested, contact us, and uh, I'll get get you some free swag just for being a listener. Yep, as a thank you. Some, we'd love to hear from you, history. and someday we'd love to have you on. What's that, Chris? Give them some five second history. Oh my god, dude, that's a hilarious idea to do act like legitimately try to do a five second history of something. <laughs> <laughs> the history of swearing on things began when man could promise. The end. <laughs> <laughs> Analytics. Let's see. 
we have 176.7 hours of uh, watch time on our channel. It's pretty good. Interesting. Our so, top videos are wonder... the uh, Lost Pioneers is number one. Bennington Triangle is number two. That one's almost 1,000 also. I wonder how much 176 hours is broken over like the 2,000 plus views we have. Maybe it's like four seconds of view. <laughs> well, it tells me how it tells me how long the average view duration for the videos is. Oh, sweet. Yeah, like the Lost Pioneers of Area Fifty One is the longest. The average view duration is five and a half minutes, oh, which dude, is about forty percent of the video, which is pretty good, I think. Yeah. Heck yeah. Uh, yeah. Then top our top five videos so far: Pioneers of Area Fifty One, Bennington Triangle. Slam ball highlights reaction. Uh, doctor versus pharmacist. Do you agree nice. with Larry David? And Monkey Island is uh, the last one, and that's a new Dude, one. Monkey too, Island's so. gonna come up fast. I uploaded I that four days ago. So, and how many is it at? Hundred thirty views in four days. That's pretty good. Dude, Monkey Island is pretty. Thanks sick. for watching. That was you a cool story. Yeah, I put yeah. out a car jutsu today or car jitsu. <laughs> Oh, I found yeah. another one that I'll bring. We're up on the up and time. up, and if you want to have have a reward for being a listener, just uh, just message me. Yep. And this is totally serious. I'm not gonna. Oh, absolutely. I'll, yeah, I'll I send would. Abs- I will time. absolutely send this. Yeah. And yeah, look forward to uh, maybe some more episodes coming live from Salt Lake soon. Yeah. And maybe after one or two, we'll be like not looking forward to them as much anymore. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're good actually. We're like, <laughs> oh, so that's what they're gonna, that's what they're gonna do, huh? Yeah. Uh, I'll pass on this. Yeah. All right then. Are you gonna try to do one this week or next? I'm week, hoping. Or? Yeah, I would yeah, hope to cool. do one this week. We'll see. We cool. everybody's excited. So if I can get them, uh, how many Thursday people or this is weekend at once that you're trying to like? Get so together? far, it's two. But I'm I'm pretty like hard. You set on and four one max. person, or you and two people. Two people, so, so three total. Three total. That's a pretty yeah, good. Maybe number. four. Honestly, I'm aiming like, for four. Four. Once you start getting over four, you kind of gotta like, yeah, it it gets a little more to- complicated, and you get more talking over each other, yep. and you kind of have to know the etiquette. Yeah, I agree with it. what you're saying, yeah. man. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I totally agree with you. I've I've told them a hard limit for me would be four. I'm not doing more than four people. Which I felt we've done four before, and it's been okay. Yeah, I think four is a good number to max out at. Yeah. Well, I think that uh, about does her for tonight. Let's call it. Yeah. Cool. All right. Thanks for listening. Email if you want a bumper sticker and a postcard. Peace out. Bye. Peace.